My name is Vanessa Kühn and I work as a product manager for emergency and transport ventilation here at Weinmann Emergency in Hamburg. And I would like to give you a short overview on the Medomat um, transport, uh, emergency and transport ventilator today. Okay, first I would like to show you the device from the outside. Um, so to start with the front side, um, we have here our display. Um, this is not a touch screen. You can um, do the settings via the rotary knobs and um, this knob is for confirming a setting. You have the on and off button here. And here we have the alarm light, which flashes red in case of a high prior alarm. On the left hand side of the device, we have the air intake. In this case, um, we have the hygienic filter here, which is also optional for the Minuma transport, um, which filters incoming air from viruses and bacteria. And we also have our um, gas inlet. Uh, so this is a, a pneumatically driven device. So it always needs um, gas from the oxygen bottle or from the wall mounting. So we have two gas inlets here. One is at the side. Um, this one is via screw and this one is a fast coupling, um, which you can also use. Um, so you can use both types. We have here our connection for um, the ventilation hose, for the flow sensor cable and for the so-called measurement hose system. I will show you how to connect everything later. And here we have our little USB port um, where you can plug in a USB drive to read out um, data. So this is the back of the device, nothing special here. So this, these are screws um, to mount the device at the wall, for example. On the right hand side, we have our uh, rechargeable battery um, and our power connection. So um, if you want to connect the device to a 20, 20 volt power connection, just plug in here and then the battery is automatically charged. Obviously, if you have the device in an ambulance, the power connection is automatically done via the wall mounting. This is our battery. It has a runtime of about seven to eight um, hours under standard ventilation. And um, to exchange the battery, just click in here. So there's a little red button. And if you put in the battery or plug in the battery, um, then make sure it always um, plugs in with a click to ensure that the battery really sits in tight. Okay, so um, now that I've explained the device from the outside, I'm going to prepare it for ventilation. For this, I first start with my oxygen supply. So as I just said, you can either use this one with a screw, which takes a bit longer. Or you can use the fast coupling, which is a special, special type. We call it a uh, type Walter. Just put it in here. And if you use this one, please um, make sure to where is my cap to use this cap here so that no air can come out here and then connect the gas supply to the oxygen supply after we have connected the gas supply um, we connect the patient circuit which I have here. So the device works with a single limb uh, patient hose system. So this is the ventilation hose I connected here. Then the so-called measurement hose system where I have three hoses here. So we have the entitled CO2 measurement. We have the uh, patient pressure measurement and the 
peep. Just do it like this. So because of the silicon port, um, there's no, um, you cannot connect this falsely. And I connect my measurement line, measurement cable for the bi check flow sensor, which is proximal. So this is the patient side of the whole system. We have the patient valve here um, with um, the pressure measurement, with the PEEP regulation here, and with a proximal flow sensor by check. If you want to ventilate a patient, please make sure always to use a um, filter at the patient side of the device because um, the exhaled air is going into um, the ambience so via this patient valve. So it is very important not only to protect the patient, but also to protect everyone um, around the patient to use uh, such a filter. Okay, so now that we have prepared the device, I would like to show you how to do a function check with the device. For this, first connect the test lung to the host system, turn on the device, and then press function check. Check that the battery is tight and then start the function check. Turn and twist every knob. Should check if everything is functioning. The device in parallel does the automatic check of the internal sensors and the external flow sensor, of course. Now we have to wait some seconds. I see here now the status of the function check. Uh, everything is green, so the device is ready to use. Please only use the device if you see this kind of picture. Okay, after we have done the function check of the device, I would like to show you now how to start ventilation. Um, first opportunity is via these emergency modes. Um, this is a very fast way to enter and start ventilation. We have pre-configured uh, settings here for these uh, three patient groups, infant, child and adult. And um, I can start it like this, clicking on here and then press enter. And right now we are in an emergency ventilation, IPPV in this case, so volume controlled ventilation, very fast, very easy, um, only for an emergency. Another way to start ventilation is via the previous patient. So only I can press previous patient and the device will start with the settings of the last patient. Um, a way to do a bit more specific settings is via the new patient. I will show it right now. I can either choose um, the three patient types here or I can go via height. Here I have the possibility to enter the gender and the height of the patient. So I will choose female here because I have a female patient and the patient is 170 centimeters tall. I go to continue and I can choose now my ventilation modes here. So I have different ventilation modes to choose from some pressure control ventilation modes like bi-level or BiPAP, um, assisted pressure control ventilation or a CPAP ASB, um, ASB is a pressure support or um, a pressure regulated volume controlled ventilation mode. I will um, choose this one. Now I can start my ventilation here. You see here all the parameters. Um, this is now what the device calculated from the patient height, a tidal volume of 366 milliliters and a frequency of 13. So start ventilation by pressing here. Now the device starts ventilation as you can hear. Um, here you see the ventilation curves um, in this pressure regulated volume controlled mode. The device needs two to three um, ventilations to find the right pressure for, um, for ventilation. Um, 
you see it here in the pressure curves and also you see below the pressure curve the flow curve. Um, on the right hand side you have all the measurement values, um, tidal volume, expiratory tidal volume, ventilation frequency and here you have the settings of the device. You can always obviously change the settings, for example the tidal volume. Um, make sure to confirm every setting with the white knob because otherwise um, the device will not take the change. Uh, on the top you have the status uh, line, you have here the battery status and also the ventilation mode which is shown here and here you obviously see the alarms in this case and tidal CO2 alarm because we don't have a patient here uh, who exhales CO2. Um, here you have the possibility to do further settings in this mode, the pressure support or the trigger and also here I can change my ventilation mode. What else? So what you have seen um, before, um, I press the alarm mute button. This button will mute all alarms for 120 seconds. Pressing long on that button will open the alarm menu. And with one click, I also have the possibility to automatically activate the alarm limits and the device calculates the alarm limits based on that measurement value. Here I have the main menu of the device. So here I also have um, an alarm um, limits menu. I have a curves menu where I can change my curves. So depending on if I have, for example, CO2 in the device, I can only change to three curves. Obviously no CO2 curve here. And I can also do more specific or advanced ventilation settings here and also some device settings or switch, for example, to night colors. Here I have the possibility to set 100% O2 for two minutes. Um, now I'm ventilating with 100% O2. No, I'm not, as I can see here. But with this button, I have the possibility to do 100% O2 for two minutes. And here I can change my FiO2. So now I have here the 40%, but I can also change it, for example, from 40 to 100%. And I can see here the measured oxygen concentration in the display. So this is basically uh, the Minima transport. Very quick, very easy. Um, now I'm finished with my ventilation. I turn on the device. Um, there's a little speci special thing. Um, so by pressing the on and off button very short, I will go to a standby mode with the device. So in this mode, the, the device um, takes power from the battery but starts up really quickly. So if you want to really turn off the device, make sure to press the on and off button for more than three seconds until the alarm light turns off. Okay, so now I would like to show you very quickly um, how to deal with the device after ventilation. Um, for this, I disconnect the gas supply. I'm gonna disconnect the ventilation hose system. So I have now um, here a disposable hose system and in this disposable hose system, um, this goes into the garbage and this here needs to be um, disinfected via wipe disinfection. Um, for this, if you use a protective sleeve, um, just open the protective sleeve. This can be reused uh, obviously as well. Separate the cable from the whole system and um, then leave the cable uh, on the device after wipe disinfection. Um, here the same. So um, here you can disconnect the cable from the flow sensor, which is always a bit hard, but this is for security reasons. And then everything goes into the garbage, also the flow sensor. This is also single use. Um, 
And then if you um, have ventilated a patient for more than 24 hours in air mix mode, you need to also exchange the filter. Uh, for this, just unscrew the two um, bayonet screws and then take the filter. This also goes into the garbage. Um, take a new filter and then just tighten the screws. If you forget this, um, no worries, uh, the device will automatically um, remind you in the next function check to exchange the filter if you have used it for more than 24 hours in air mix mode. And then um, the device is um, can be wiped, disinfected. Of course, um, I'm not using gloves right now, but um, yeah, normally, of course, I would use gloves. Okay, and then the device is ready for the next patient. Okay, thank you for listening. Um, further information you will find, of course, in our instructions for use and also in this step-by-step uh, -step instructions. Um, both you can download from our website as well as a PC simulation where, where you can train um, the use of the device at a computer. Um, you can download everything from uh, wyman-emergency.com. Thank you.